Hi guys, what's up? Welcome to video number six. And today is the probably most important video of the whole series. Because today we will be putting everything together and finally get the answer to the question, how can we assess the quality of a deck? And even more important, how can we compare different builds of a deck to decide which one is better? But if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, please do it now. This will be very important for me to get the feedback. And at the same time, you can also let me know with a comment or a like if you think that this content is useful and I should do more of that. But now without further ado, let's start with our content. So last time, if you remember, we got something important. We got two numbers that I want to report here. We say that the probability of making construct knowing that now this terminology should be quite familiar to you knowing that opponent had no hand trap was 69 percent right and then we say it's an approximation we can put that and on the other hand we say that the probability of making construct knowing that opponent has got hand trap was something around 34.6%. And this was coming from the technique that we explained where we counted outs. If you don't remember, you can check the previous video. Now, what are we going to do with these numbers? We are going to use this formula that I want to write here, and this is very important. And because it's very important, maybe we can change color. Let's write it in black. I write it here, okay? So our estimation of the probability of making construct is equal to the first guy here. So the probability of making construct if no hand trap times the probability of no hand trap plus the probability of construct knowing that the opponent has got hand trap times the probability of opponent having hand trap. This form is what you need to remember. It was a long journey, but we wanted to end with this guy here. Okay? So let me explain the meaning of that. Of course, to know if we are able or not to make construct, we have two scenarios. Opponent may or may not have hand traps, and we have seen that in the first case we got uh, one probability, in the other case we have a different probability. But we need to weigh these two guys here with the probability that opponent has actually entered or not. And guess what? To get these, we can use the hypergeometric calculator again. Let's write here that uh, this guy, you can see on top, this is 69%. This is 34.6%. Right? How can we compute this and how can we compute that? Okay, let's go to the hypergeometric calculator and see. So what is the assumption? The assumption is that we are playing against someone with 40 cards. That is the standard deck size for many people. And then we assume that there are six centers. Remember, three gamma, three ash. So the question is, if opponent has got five cards in his hand, what is the probability that this guy has at least one hand trap, right? Out of the six in the deck of 40 cards. And then we find out that the probability is 57.7. Meaning to say, the probability of having zero hand trap, you can see here, less than one, so zero is 42.3. So again, probability of having hand trap is, is 57.7, no hand trap, 42.3 so let's write it here 
no entrop again is 42.3% and here we have 57.7 so what does it mean well it means that we have now all the elements to compute this guy let's do it now so we have 69% times 42.3 plus 34.6 times 57.7 and we get 49.2 so this guy here is 49.2 percent meaning to say with all the assumptions we made that i know uh, we is not really the super 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 precise procedure because we we may have overlapping as we have seen we are not counting exactly everything like we may get construct in a indirect way with upcalon and then opponent may have different hand traps he may have more than one hand trap so of course as i said if we want to make it more precise we can but it's more complicated but already with this approximation here we can say that the probability realistically that we have to make construct in this scenario is around 50 percent basically 49.2 percent okay so now what is the idea well we can use this formula to to create a better deck now before going to that some of you may have this question and say okay uh, actually this 69 percent can be improved right because this 69 percent for example if we start to make uh, you know the deck differently we put inside more cards to get fusion more lies target we can put things like gale dogra that can give access to everything we need we can put uh, three magistus invocation three magistus where we can uh, you know even remove all the, uh, the traps like the schism or the rash or the dinomiscus uh, punishment to put more cards that allow us to get light fusion and shadow monster yes we can do that problem is we are losing in flexibility because you know getting construct is yes very important but it's not a winning condition itself it's not that if we make construct we won the game of course it's very important but then we need more so the idea was that the flexibility let's write it here the flexibility is the fact that we have 60 cards and inside these cards we have many many uh, responses let's say meaning to say all the for example dinomiscus we have the rash we have many things that we can use to uh, especially play in the later stage of the game so given this given the let's say the build where you decide that you want to have a number of cards and you want to have uh, like two rash two dinomiscus whatever it is then this guy here is basically representing your resilience okay and this guy here is representing your consistency so you see now how all this comes together the flexibility is basically given by the number of cards we choose and especially which kind of cards that we need to run even though they are not useful now to make our construct that is the objective we have okay so this is our objective and it doesn't have to be the only objective you know you may for example have a different objective you may want to make window so then the build will be different this was just an example because construct is so important but different people have different styles so it's not really the only option so the flexibility again is the number of cards we use together with the cards that we use not 
really related to this objective but something that we need for example punishment that we can search with Ecclesia or Nadir and all these cards that we didn't use for this but are really important as well. And then resilience is coming from this. How many times can we get here even though there are disruptions? And consistency is how many times can we get here regardless of uh, what opponent has. So we can do it, um, but we are not looking at hand traps, for example. And then, of course, the last missing point was to compute the probability of opponent having hand trap or having no hand trap, right? And again, we can use the hypergeometric calculator. So you see how everything now produces a single number. And why is that important? Because now that you have a single number, you can do this. You can repeat the whole procedure for another version of your deck. And if the number you got is lower than that, then it means that the alternative version of your deck is not as good as this one. So I repeat again, if you want to decide between different bits of your deck, maybe you are not sure about uh, running um, this engine instead of that engine because you don't know which one is better in terms of making construct, what are you supposed to do? Let's write it here. So, um, maybe we write how to compare to, but even more, to bits. So number one, you need to know how many hand traps opponent is playing and which hand traps. How many and which hand traps. Number two, you need to compute with the hypergeometric calculator. Compute uh, basically this formula, right? Compute P of construct for each bit. Meaning to say, we you need to do what we have done in the previous video, counting the outs, converting outs into probability, and then getting this number with the hypergeometric calculator. And number three, you pick the build. with the larger value of P construct. Okay, this is basically the set of steps that we need to follow when we want to decide if build A is better than build B. Okay? And that's basically the end of the series in a way because it's not really the end in terms of the videos because there will be something interesting I will let you know later. But in terms of methodology, that's it. You know, we started from the definition of consistency, resilience, flexibility. We saw, for example, how to test uh, many hands to get some confidence interval for the real probability of this guy and that guy that we don't know. So the difference between testing ends and saying something about the deck. Then we use the hypergeometric calculator to find an estimation of these numbers that we verified were inside the ranges that we compute before. And then we apply this formula by computing also the probability of opponent having no entrap or having entrap. We got a number. If we get this number for different builds, we just pick the one giving us the largest value and then we are done. So, next video, you will have the opportunity to really check if you learn. Okay, to understand what you have understood. And basically what is going to happen is, um, well, I don't tell you now. Just stay tuned for the next video. It will be quite interesting. And in the meantime, I suggest you to just quickly revise what you have learned so far. And I would say the most important is this formula, but just have a quick look at the previous video because it will be very useful.
So with that, I thank you for watching. As I said before, if you have any question, any comment, just let me know. Put a like, subscribe to the channel and see you next time.